Hi, Bull Bakers. Recently, I posted my very first vlog of me organizing my pantry, and it was a huge hit with you guys. It was totally messy. There was some stuff that definitely should have been thrown out and some weird things that I tasted that I'm still not 100% sure what they were. Anyway, I thought you might like another behind the scenes look at my food styling props, all my vintage pieces and my old bakeware sets and everything that we use to create our food photography and our styling here at Bigger Bolger Baking. I have a whole room out in the garden that I dedicate to my props. It's a little bit crazy, back there. I know it is messy. I'm just going to warn you, but let's go check it out. So this is my garden. Here is my garage, but the back of the garage, we actually have this separate area, which for us was just absolutely amazing. It is a bonus kitchen. So check this out. This is where I keep my food styling props. So this is my area. This is where I keep all my props. There is, there's something in every single cupboard. So I wanted to just, just like go through them. A lot of these things mean a lot to me. I have carried them on carry-on luggage. I have um, bought them from all over the world and I take really good care of them. So I want to just show you a little bit of what I have. So I always have my eyes open for beautiful things that I will use for food photography, always, no matter where I'm going, even if it's just up the street to get some groceries. This is a cake stand that I got in TJ Maxx. In Ireland, it's TK Maxx or in Europe. This, oh look, it's even got a sticker on it. This was $13. Everybody always asks me where I got this cake stand. Everybody without fail. In my book, we put fairy cakes on this and we put little flowers around and everything. It was just absolutely gorgeous. So I love this. And more cake stands in here. There's a wooden one also from TJ Maxx. This I definitely got at a thrift store. And it's one of those things where I've had very little use for it, but when I did need it, it came in really handy and it looked great. You never know what is going to look great at a time when you're pulling together a recipe. There's some props I don't use all the time, but when you um, have that certain recipe that needs that little bit of something, like this is when you pull out these and it just works perfectly. Oh, look at this. I love this. I know this is just a glass bowl, but this reminded me very much of the old cookbooks my mom used to have, um, like that are from the 70s that had like a big fruit salad, an old school fruit salad. But I just thought this was like a real like blast from the past. I got this at a thrift store for only a few dollars. I absolutely love it. Here's my collection of saucers, bowls, serving platters, all of these things were picked up in thrift stores. I can tell you, where did I get this? Where did I get this? Shoot, I got this in America somewhere. It says Chelsea on the back, really pretty. The thing about these is that you only get one of each ever. You're really lucky if you get a set. So I have so many of these small little plates that you only have one of each. I'll tell you where this came from. My mom gave me this. It says Crown Staffordshire. Uh, made in England. A lot of this stuff is made in England. Gorgeous little plate. I've actually never used it for food photography because it's so busy. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is actually like hang it on the wall or something like that. So beautiful. So when you go into thrift stores or into charity shops or to um, consignment stores, places like that, you'll find a lot of saucers and one-offs because they just kind of seem to gather up. So it is harder to get side plates serving plates, something that's a little bit bigger because if you put something on something that's too small, it doesn't look right. I love this plate. I used this plate. I think we did a, um, a Spanish bread on the website and we used this plate. I think I got it in Northern California up in wine country. I absolutely love it. I love the color of it. I love that there's no um, gold or silver around the rim. There's just something like so bright about it. Oh, look at this. So I don't have a huge amount of Royal Albert Bone China. You guys probably recognize this design. Kevin got me this in Wexford, Ireland, where I'm from, at a little kind of a flea market. And it was a little bit pricey. Not, it, wasn't, it wasn't pricey. It was like, it was more than I normally spent on a plate. It was 30 euros. And normally I get my plates for like three euros or something like that. But it's a really nice piece. And I think we put a lemon cake on it before. And it just really pops in the simplicity of the gold. And it makes it kind of like elegant looking. I really love this. If you see something of this pattern, I'd say definitely nab it because uh, they are quite valuable. 
Let me show you these lovely bowls. I got these in a place in Wexford town where I'm from. It's actually outside of Wexford called the Treasure Trove Antiques in Castlebridge, County Wexford. Beautiful kind of gold gilded plates made in France. Really beautiful. I have a few of them. Little bowls for um, ice cream, for uh, we've done semi fredo in them before. My recommendation is when you see something like this and you like it, grab it because you don't know how long it's going to be there for. So those are my plates. No two are the same. Everything is unique. Everything has a story, which I absolutely love. And uh, I started out with literally one plate. I can even show you. Years ago, eight years ago, when we started Bigger Boulder Baking, I saw this plate in, in a Goodwill in Santa Monica, I think. I fell in love with it. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. So if you look back at my very old food photography, my stuff was on this. And I think this was the plate that sparked my love for like just beautiful, um, unique, like previously loved dishes. And I just, I absolutely love it. Why do I love it? I don't know, it's colorful. There's gold trim, everything. I have everything kind of broken up into sections of things that I need. So I think I have bowls in here. Yeah, like little dishes. Souffle dishes, creme brulee dishes. I love these. I got these in a thrift store for a few dollars. I broke one of them, unfortunately. I absolutely adore them. And then you have to have standard dishes, you know, creme brulee dishes, ramekins. So now because it's baking, we do a lot of like afternoon tea. We do a lot of like bundt cakes, loaf cakes, things like that. So we try and set up this scene for like coffee time, breakfast time, like I said, afternoon tea, things like that. So I have a ton of teacups, saucers, coffee mugs, anything you would need for a tea situation. I've got it. This was a charity shop. Um, that was in Santa Barbara on the main street on, what's it called? Street, what's that street called? Main street? State street. I found these two mugs. Like who on earth would need, it says on the bottom, roller disco, roller disco. Who would need roller disco mugs? Like in all fairness. So I've used those very rarely, but um, you have to have some roller disco mugs in your collection. So as you can see, I have a lot of props. So not everything um, has a home in a cupboard. So some stuff, much to Kevin's chagrin, has to live out on the countertop. That's why he doesn't come back here very often. But I have a lot of like, look at my teapots here. I have some teapots and jugs. I absolutely adore this. Um, let me see what else you have here. These little bowls. I use these bowls a lot. I use them um, in my cookbook. I use them. I have saucers for them. Really beautiful. Like what do you call that? Royal blue or something. Absolutely gorgeous. I love those. Great for food photography. Would you use them in everyday life? No, probably not. Should you? Yeah, you probably should because they're so pretty and who would not like to eat out of those bowls? So this is something that I got recently in Wexford. I put this in my carry-on and almost like I had the winning lotto ticket, I carried it all the way very closely from Ireland to Los Angeles because I didn't want it to break. It's a, is it a cafetiere? I don't really know what it is. It's, it was a coffee pot. I absolutely fell in love with it. And we used this recently also in the same uh, setup that we did for the Tweel. We did the coffee scene. I used this and I filled it full of coffee. These are the kind of things that make me very happy. Not everything is old. This, however, is old. I have quite a strong connection to this. I used this in my first cookbook. My mom, we were a family of seven. My mom and five kids and my mom and my dad. So it's eight inches. It's a little bit small. My mom used to do crumbles um eve's pudding everything in this little dish and it's something i have such fond memories of growing up so when i did my first cookbook i said to her mom can i take that and put that in my first cookbook and she said yeah no problem i just has so there's so much nostalgia attached and like lovely food memories attached to this i absolutely love it over here oh oh look at this i love this how cool is this like in all fairness a green measuring jug absolutely love it i also got this in wexford um, definitely it came from England or somewhere like that. So it's funny that it has cups on it because we don't use cups. We went on our honeymoon um, to Mexico and I saw this in a gift store at the hotel and it's a soap dish. <laughs> so it's not a butter dish, even though it looks like it, it's a soap dish, but it works really well as a butter dish. And we've shot that in a lot of photography and it looks really good. You never know what you're going to find on your travels. What's up here? Oh yeah, this is all my glass. I have a lot of glass bowls dishes, jugs. Look at this. I adore this. I think I got this at the flea market in LA, the Rose Bowl. I'm pretty sure I did. It is a maple syrup jug, like 
really retro, old school. I absolutely adore it. Like how gorgeous is that? Oh, my glass stuff. I like to keep everything separated. You know, I, there is a certain amount of order <laughs> to the disorder. <laughs> what else do we have? What's in here? Nothing's in there. I do have to say I find these on Etsy and places like that because it is harder to find vintage tins. So I got these on Etsy. Uh, this was given to me by Kate Martindale, who is a stylist for my first, uh, for my book. And she's amazing. And she gave me this lovely angel food cake pan. This was made by, you know, um, in America, there's a cake flower called Swan. And uh, this is one of their tins. I got this on Etsy also. These pieces I do pay a little bit more for. And by a little bit more, I mean $12, something like that. But I have to kind of seek these out. It's much harder to find these in uh, consignment stores and in charity shops. If you do, you're very lucky. This is an old, this is a fondue. It was a, like, it would have been a set originally. It was a fondue pot. I got this in um, a charity shop also. It's very 70s, as is fondue. Beautiful to photograph. We used this in our, we did caramel apples, I think two years ago for Christmas or for, for Halloween. And we used uh, the, that pot. Oh, let's go over here to my linens because I want to show you. Um, these are like, you know, part of the props and the styling is also linens. So it can be hard to find linens. I'll tell you why. If you go to a prop house, which they have in LA to rent props, you're paying like $20 for these. But if you're smart, you uh, keep always an eye out. And I picked up a lot in, uh, in Wexford. Again, a lot of people don't use these on a daily basis. You don't need, nobody uses tablecloths anymore. Nobody has these doilies and fancy napkins, but they look so amazing. Look at this. Then these are tablecloths. These are full tablecloths, really old. And I'll tell you, I'll show you, look at this. There's holes, you see that? There's holes in these, but you know what? Um, they're so pretty and they're so unique and they're like previously loved that we shoot around that. So you don't even see that. But like, oftentimes there's stains on these that you can't get off. There's holes and through the magic of uh, my photographer, we shoot around them. Like, look at this. Who needs a tablecloth that looks like this? The answer is me. I need this tablecloth. We did it recently for um, the Academy. We shot something on it and uh, I love it. I love it. I love how it's not really in style <laughs> anymore. Those are tablecloths. I also have, where's my napkins? These are, uh, and also like napkins and things like that. Little, little accents. Look at this. How beautiful is that? Little accents that we put in the corners of photos we place a dessert on. Gone crazy on embroidered um, little, like, I don't know, let me see, I'll show you. Like, look at this, look at this. How gorgeous is that? These all end up in secondhand shops because nobody uses them anymore. You know, um, that's, that's where I, I come in and I swoop them up, I love them. So these all have to be steamed and ironed before we use them, so they look good for camera. Oh, I wanna show you this, look at. Here I have my collection of knives and forks. I pick these up everywhere I go. I do not spend a lot of money on knives and forks. There's absolutely no need to. If you see them for a lot of money, I'd say keep on looking. Look at this. I did get this in Ireland. I'm trying to get this mark off it. I absolutely adore the spoon for serving. I just, I love to have like a variety of serving spoons. Cake, uh, cake slices, things like that. They're super important. So those are my knives and forks. I've got tons of those. Oh, I want to show you these. So these are my other utensils, but stuff that are, they're not knives and forks. They are like vintage, old school palette knives, carving knives. Okay, so look at this. There was an estate sale in my neighborhood in Santa Monica, and you never know what you'll find. I found this gorgeous old school sieve that nobody else wanted except for me. And I think it was like $2. It's battered, it's bruised, it's old, and it's, it has this, like that's, that's um, so old fashioned. And then we have things like this, an old palette knife. Look at that. Beautiful for food photography. 
So there you go. Those are all my props. Now, when you see our recipes out there, our food photography, our website, you'll know how much care and attention went in to bringing those photos together. And so much love is behind those dishes that the recipes lay on. Let me know in the comments below what other vlogs you would like to see. I am happy to show you guys around more. I'm going to head off now and you guys don't have to go home, but you can't stay here.